Hey, welcome back to Equivoke. In the last episode, we are finding more information about Sir Barnabas, and we're calling people out on their logical fallacies. Anyways, let's continue. And then he says to me, DeWitt Whiskerby, your psychic gifts are so magnificent, so developed, I just have to have you in my inner circle. And that's how Sir Barnabas took me into his inner circle. As a plucky protagonist, I humbly accept this plot convenience. So amazing! Show us your powers again, Mr. DeWitt. Yeah, come on, I can't really hear you guys. Could you speak up? Alright, if you insist. Ah, amazing! He bent a spoon. So supernatural. I still can't hear you, but what I saw was so cool. I have some questions about your psychic claims. Eh, you're pretty big for your short pants, little bunny. I don't need to answer your questions. Can't you just feast your eyes on this? Oh, wow. You bent a spoon. That's nice. Okay, bending a spoon doesn't prove that there's no natural cause for that. For it. Yeah, but you can't figure out how known cause. That's because I'm bending it with my mind. Okay. But that doesn't make sense. Just because you don't know the cause, that doesn't automatically make it supernatural. That's exactly right. What he's trying to do is called an appeal to ignorance. He's saying that because the other causes are not known, his claim is automatically true. Which, you know, doesn't make sense. I like this. Urgh. Listen to you. You're just a dumb kid. What do you know? I know how you're bending spoons. Is that so? If you're wrong, I'm gonna kick your butt out of this bar, short pants. Then if I'm right, you have to tell me about Barnabas. You're on. Hmm, okay. You're carrying pre-worked spoons with you, and to get them to bend, you only need a small amount of pressure from your thumb. You're using a real spoon, but you're bending on the table. Hmm. That could be true. You're not bending the spoon at all. You're letting the grip, handle grip side in your hands. I don't know which one it is. Okay, hold on. Uh... Hmm. Uh, you're using a real spoon, but you're bending on the table. I think that one might be it. Ah, total nonsense. Deal's a deal, short pants. Out you go. Obviously, the real answer is I'm using my totally amazing psychic powers. Damn. Well, now what, Mint? What the? Who are you? What's with the sack? Mint? Mint? Now you get what you want, kid. You get to see the Barnabas. Stooge, who are you? I guess whatever we picked would have been the same. Where's Mint, anyway? Uh... So this is Sir Barnabas. Nice, nice outfit. Uh, you'll never take me alive. Hmm. Might want to look, take a look around, kiddo. I already have you, so you might as well relax a little. The strong silent type, eh? Well, this is going to be a pretty boring dinner, then. Garson? Gar- Garkin? I could always go for a cheeseburger, but do you like waffles? I know, I know. It's dinner time, but I can't help it. I'm just a breakfast or dinner kind of guy. <laughs> I'd rather die than eat your dirty liar waffles. Heh, <laughs> I'll hand it to you. You have a lot of spunk, kid. Have it your way. You can have pancakes. Enjoy your mushy syrup rags. Garkin, waffles for me, and pancakes for the bunny. 
All right, now while that gets settled, why don't we get to know each other? Ah, no need for you to speak. I already know everything I need to. Lately, you felt a little bit out of control. It's been like some external force has been controlling you, right? And that force, it's almost like a person, a person who is good-hearted and means well, but is hard on themselves, particularly lately, and especially about slacking off in their pursuits. This person often feels like they're not making use of their full potential, and they feel guilty about this. This is a person who, in spite of presenting a controlled and disciplined exterior, hides insecurity and worry on the inside. They don't want to concern other people, and at the same time, feel a great need for the approval and admiration of other people. Which is funny, because this person has been hurt before. They're cautious to reveal too much of themselves to others. They're an independent thinker who gets bored if things stay the same, but still gets anxious at first when encountering things. But once they're settled in, they adapt fairly quickly. They're intuitive and hate being lied to. This person should be easier on themselves, I think. They'll get around to writing that book they've always write, wanted to write. They have it in them. He's talking to men, I think. What do you think? Does that sound right? <laughs> Screaming internally. I'll take your prolonged silence as a yes. Your dinner, Sir Bonavis, and guest. So, kid. My name is Ban. Ban Cushion. Yeah, I don't really care. Really? Like, the. Whatever. Anyways, it has come to my attention that you've been snooping around, asking questions about how it is I do what I do. And I should come as. And it should come as no surprise to you. That's a problem. And I don't mean, I don't just mean for me. I mean for the people I help with my act. You mean the people you deceive? Ah, but what is a little deception in the face of happiness? Would I give those people? All right, I'll admit that's not really their dead relatives, but don't you dare tell me what is happening isn't real to them. Doubt is a misplace of truth, a tear in the, a tear in the lace of truth, and questions mislead. Don't heed the stakes of truth, and the stakes are high, the emotional well-being of these people, a belief in something greater than themselves. Do you have the right to take it away? Okay, so he thinks he's doing something for a good cause. And furthermore, does Mint the Splendid? That's right, I know who sent you. Let's just say this isn't the first time we've crossed paths, and leave it there in their little sat... Sacker tort? Sugar... Tart? I see you have some thinking to do. And if I don't think you have the right to lie to people? Well, I don't want to have to hurt a kid. But I'll do what I have to. So I'd, con I'd suggest you reconsider. Don't come sniffing around me again, alright? Or I'll be forced to take more unsavory measures. So what do you say? I'll stop. And we're lying. Marvelous. I knew you'd see things my way. And with that, Garkan. Show us the young mooncake out. Show... Oh yeah. I hope this is not affect my tip. Sack or none, you should always tip your servers 20%. Okay. Ah, there you are. I was getting worried. Pretty sure you heard everything. Listen, I know that was scary, what you just experienced. I heard it all through the pin. I'm sorry I couldn't comfort you, but I didn't want to give away that I was listening in. You have some pretty messed up priorities, Mint. Look, I didn't make you leave that bar. That was all your decision. It's not my fault you were apprehended. You need to stick to the plan. You have to trust me. But... I won't put you in harm's way. I don't ever put you in harm's way. I promise. So you heard me lie to Barnabas then? Who cares if you lie to a liar? He has it coming to him. Someone like Barnabas 
It doesn't matter what you do to him, because he's scum, Bunt. Scum? That's pretty intense. I mean, it does matter a little bit what we do to him, right? I mean, we should never sink to his level. We're not sinking to his level. Something, sometimes it just feels that way, because the ends justify the means. I don't really agree with that line of thinking, though. Like, if we hurt him, that would be, that wouldn't be okay, no matter the outcome. Violence is never okay, right? Mint? I'm older than you, Munt, and less wide-eyed. In life, just like in magic, sometimes things happen, and sometimes people get hurt. The important thing is to ensure the well-being of as many people as possible. In a perfect world, those people are innocent, and that number is zero. But that isn't always the case. Accidents happen, and if an accident happened to Barnabas Call Cannon, I wouldn't lose sleep. Hmm. He said truth was justice, but in this situation, it sounds an awful lot like punishment. Truth is justice, but you can't make an omelet without breaking a few eggs. I'd like to think the truth comes home to roost for liars. Maybe that sounds like punishment to you. Okay, I'm not really sure I agree with this guy. I'm feeling conflicted. I think Barnabas is doing the wrong thing, but for the right reasons. I mean, I think it's wrong because he's making a lot of money from it. The right reasons? He's stealing from grieving people. Yeah, exactly. What reason could you have to justify that? You need to be skeptical, Bunt. You can't let yourself be fooled like everyone else. You have to expose him for what he is. If you don't, you're complacent. You're complacent in what he's doing. Yeah, but it still feels a little wrong. False medium, true magician. You're feeling pretty indecisive. Which way are you leaning? True magician, false medium, just act like you usually do. You'll figure it out as you go. What's wrong? You look a little ill. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I'm having doubts about all this. Maybe investigating will set my heart over to rest. Alright then, good luck. Come back when you find something. You're having a difficult time sneaking in. Sneaking isn't really one of your strong suits. Someone finds us immediately. Hey, it's you. Are you sneaking in too? Uh, I'm trying to, but not having much luck. Hey, keep your chin up. Sneaking is hard the first few times, but it gets easier. I know we'll cheer you up. A pin from Sir Bonavis's show. Let me see if I have one on me. Uh, what did people want to pin from Barnabas's show? Wait. They're collectibles. You can only get them from the show. He's really harsh on people. He's fine selling them. But see, it's okay. Because the ones I find, they're left on the floor. They're dirty and gross and dinged up. Or dinged up. So he won't mind if old Hugh gets a penny or two off of him. Interesting. Okay. Hey, what's that noise? You're gonna get us both caught. Sorry, it's my radio. Mint? Mint? Weird. She's not trying to get in contact with me. Oh, Mint's a girl. I didn't know that. Whoops, sorry. Let's get inside, quick. That was a close one. Someone could have seen us. And word around Lime Street is Sir B isn't too keen on seeing you around his show. Yeah, I think I could use a disguise. You don't say. Well, I just happen to have my less than legitimate Barnabas merchandise. We'll get you taken care of in a jiff. Beautiful. There, nobody will recognize you. Good luck with your sneaking. Mysterious murmuring. Oh, look, 
another lucky. Hmm. Wait, that doesn't sound like mint. That sounds like Hugh. Hugh? Is that you? Ha, <laughs> another one. Jackpot. I think I figured it out. Yep. <laughs> Nobody can hear me, but that's okay, because I did it. We're going to lose contact once you enter the tent from all the interference. You know the plan, Bunt. I trust you. You cracked it. And you're going to help a lot of people. Okay, so what's going on here, I think, is that every everyone's pin is a microphone. And it's causing interference with ours. Alright. <sighs> right. We're going to help people. Now we definitely know that Sir Barnabas is up to no good. Because he's listening in on everyone. And that is an invasion of pro uh, privacy. Okay. Exactly. All right. Be careful planting that device, or it won't go off. Then the big reveal will be ruined. Uh, right. I'll let you know how it goes. Bun? Yes. Never mind. Hmm. There. That's it. Now I do my thing, and hit the button. It'll activate, and everyone will know the truth. And that'll be good, right? We're still having doubts. I mean, but isn't Barnabas doing this for the right reasons? Is he right in this situation? Maybe he is. And if he is, then what I'm doing is wrong. I should tell him. Truth is a good thing, right? And if he's just trying to help people, then that makes me the villain, doesn't it? Oh no, I have to tell him. How much did we get tonight? Sold out, Barnabas, sir. That's 175 ahead. At the very least, 14k. Hmm. Oh boy, Stooge, there's nothing quite like the generosity of the bereaved. Very true, sir. And no sign of that magician's rabbit? No, sir. Alright then, no need to keep the poor saps waiting. Stooge, get to your station. Other Stooge, open the doors. Let's get this show on the road. Yes. Let's. How wonderful to see you all here tonight. You could have been anywhere, but you chose to come see me. I feel blessed, and so should your loved ones. Okay, so we're uh, convinced that we're doing the right thing now. Now, I won't waste any more time, because I know how precious it is. Let's get started, shall we? Ooh, boy. I'm getting a strong vibe. Did someone here lose someone in a tragic boating accident? Mm, okay. Uh, hold everything or please wait a minute. Hold everything. You could have better lost someone in one seriously tragic boating accident. Or we're gonna have a problem. Barnabas is a liar and a fake and... Security, we clearly have a deranged fan on the stage. Driven mad with grief from the relative they lost in the boating accident. Please see them out so they can get the mental help they so desperately need. Sorry kid, the truth may set us free, but it gets you shoved in a sack. Oi, let the kid talk. Hey, it's you. This kid is a little bit of a weirdo, but they're coming from a good place most of the time. They've been helping me think better, and that's not easy. Sir, I appreciate your patronage, but this rabbit is hysterical. I think this rabbit has a point. All I'm saying is, if you're the real thing, if we've got nothing to worry about, and if you're fake, we've got a right to know. Hey, he's got a good point. Barnabas can't be a fake, can he? Does he look worried to you? Stand down, Stooch. The life of a stooge is usually predictable. In the face of this uncertainty, I will concede the whims of the universe. Do your thing, kid. Friends and animal folk, I must have your attention. Barnabas has been lying to you all, and I'm going to prove it. And who are you to make these claims exactly? You're just a little cinnamon roll. 
She is a cinnamon roll. A kid. A... A magician. How typical. It may be typical, but it's the truth. And the truth is justice. Yeah, let him have it. Truth is justice? Sounds kind of corny. I don't know. I think it's kind of cool. It's time you learn. I'll learn the truth. And the truth is this. <gasps> the truth is a tiny robot eyeball? It's not a tiny robot eyeball. It's a radio hidden in a brooch. A brooch. Just like the ones you're all wearing. Inside those commemorative pins. <gasps> I can see it. There really is no such thing as pre-print pins. He's been picking up your background muttering from before the show via an earpiece. My radio brooch has been picking up feedback from the mics every time I get close to them. That's how I figured it out. This is how he knows so much about you. One of his students relays information to him that he wrote down. Other than that, it's just cold reading. He reads your body language and makes guesses until he's on target. You all forget the misses because you're so excited about the hits. None of this is real, and he's robbing you blind. Everyone, <laughs> who are you going to believe? Me or this loud little disruption in short pants? Just open the pins. See for yourselves. There are wires in here. That disruption, disruption in short pants is telling the truth. Barnabas is a phony. Those wires are... N nothing. They're just to channel your psychic energy. What a load. Only rocks channel psychic energy. Nice. I don't really think that rocks do that either. Hey, you're we're really united front here. And we're mad at that liar. As for finale, as for the finale, there's a radio jammer under the stage. Once I switch it on, it'll render the pins useless. Let's see you read someone's mind after your earpiece is fried, and you can't hear the specifics anymore. What? You're an amateur inventor now, too? Do wonders never cease, young Jelly Roll? Well, I had help for this part. Listen, Biscuit. I know who helped you. You don't want to do that. My name... is Bunt. What did we do? Oh my god. Why was there an explosion? Bun, Bun, are you right? It wasn't a radio jammer. No, it wasn't. How did you know? Are you really psychic after all? No, I'm not. I just know your employer very well. Ben tried to just bring kill us. We used to be an escape duo. People used to say we'd rival Harry Houdini one day. We did pretty death-defying things. Menth, or as you know her, Menth the Splendid, was always really gifted with creating tricks and stunts, and I had a gift for generating crowds. What happened? It wasn't enough for me. I wanted a solo career, and I wasn't happy being a magician. People knowing I was a fake, Mantha always saw it as this noble pursuit, but I always thought it was a thankless job. Why be fake when you could be supernatural, like a specter or a unicorn or something? That life was far more appealing to me. I tried to convince Mantha to take our act in that direction, but she refused. She could never see the overwhelming benefits of a little moral flexibility. So I cut her loose, right as her act was picking up momentum. It was hard for her to accept, even as Mint the Splendid. She never gave the fame the success we would have had in our act had I stuck around. <laughs> Since I emerged in the limelight again, she's been making it her mission to expose me as a fraud and worse, but I've never thought she'd risk a kid's life for a chance to kill me. About that, why'd you save me? You threatened me earlier. 
And then right as I was dramatically unmasking you as a fraud, you stopped me from exploding. Why? I don't know. I guess it's one thing to permanently silence you for the sake of my act. It's another thing to let you be a casualty in the crossfire between me and Menth. I see. Wait. I have one more question. Ugh, scone. I've had a long day, and the officers are getting impatient. Make it quick. What happened to her brother, Fennel? Kid, Menth doesn't have a brother. There is no Fennel. Oh. Okay. Bun, you're right. I heard that something went wrong with the radio jammer, and it caused an explosion at the show. I'm so glad you made it out all right. Ooh, okay, we can lie to her. Or we can tell the truth. You know what? Since Mint is, has been lying to us, we can just tell the truth. Be the bigger person, right? Does that make sense? Barnabas made it out right. He saved us both. Well, that was strangely mag magnanimous of him. He saved me because he knew it was going to explode. Because you rigged it to explode. Don't be ridiculous. Why would I put you in harm's way? I promise you nothing bad would happen to you. Um. Technically speaking, you didn't put me in harm's way. Just because you promised something doesn't make it so. Not for me. I always keep my promises. And yet, I found myself in harm's way. Uh, technically speaking, you didn't put me in harm's way. What are you getting at? I'm the one who put me in harm's way, right? By sending that bomb up. Yes, you are. And you lied about Fennel to get me to planet. You probably knew the whole time about how Barnabas was faking his powers. I did. That brooch of yours? It has a twin. Barnabas has it. We used to use them for the act to remotely give each other instructions for some of our feats. When he was claiming to be a psychic, I stopped at one of his shows. The moment I saw the commemorative pins, it was pretty obvious how he, how he was doing it. What I needed was an innocent face to get close enough to do some real damage to him. So I made up Fennel's story. A composite of real stories I had heard from Barnabas' audience. You have to understand. Barnabas is doing bad things. He needs to be stopped. Barnabas is doing bad things. But so are you. He also saves me. And you want people to spread truth. You both do good things too. People are more complicated than good or bad. To argue otherwise, that's a black and white fallacy. I like that. I'm not... I'm not being very logical at all right now. I suppose none of it is very logical at all. Now that I think about it. I think you can better hold on to these for me. I think after this, you've earned them. I hope they serve as a reminder. Not of me, but of what you learned from all this. You have the tools now, but it's up to you to decide how to use them. Yep. The police are here. The police. A pair of cuffs would be a fitting end for an escape artist, don't you think? Don't worry. I won't slip free. These are just my desserts. I... I really am sorry, Bunt. About everything. When you're as famous as I am, you'd think they send me my own police car. Funny. I was gonna say the same thing. Don't look so smug. You deserve this for fooling all those people. And I deserve this for, well, for what? I went too far, Barnabas, clearly. Menth. Quit your reacting. It's time to bring you both to justice. Uh, isn't truth justice? What? Where'd you hear a thing like that? 
I don't know. I heard it somewhere around town. I'm afraid I gotta let her go to jail. Do nothing. Went went too far after all. Honest apprentice. Attempt mint trick. You successfully recreate mint mint the splendid signature trick. Nobody saw, but it was very impressive. The end. That was a very short, adorable little novel. I like that. Um, I hope you enjoyed that little uh, bedtime story. I think we made the right choice in the end. But, uh, yeah, I still kind of feel bad for both Mint and Barnabas. But anyway, thanks for watching my video. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Swear to entertain you best in case.